Mitch Album, The Magic Strings of Frankie Presto, your new book. A lot of excitement here at Book Expo America. Welcome, first of all. Yeah, thanks, good to see you, Rich. This book is um, always a lot of excitement when a new Mitch Album book comes out. I just saw it on the floor. The line was going through the entire hall. Uh, but it comes every couple of years. Tell me about how the story for Frankie Presto came about. Well, I have always been in love with music, and I was a musician before I was a writer. And I don't know why I've gone this far into my career and never written about music. I, I, I've never touched it as a subject. And it's crazy because I'm probably more naturally a musician than even I am a writer. I mean, my first love was that, and that's what I wanted to be. And it was only after I sort of failed at music that I kind of fell into writing. So uh, when I finally decided to write this novel about music, I threw everything I had into it, and it's the biggest book I've written by almost twice. You know, everybody's usually used to my books as being real tiny, and you it's can, little, you know, it's definitely got some. It was uh, yeah. four hundred and something, pa four hundred forty pages in that form. That's like really two of my books. Uh, but I've always loved music and the influence that music has, and kind of basic idea came to me about someone asked about all the bands that I've been in in my life over the course of time, and uh, I said, well, you know, everybody joins a band in their life. You know, only some of them play music. And uh, I was kind of kidding around, but then the more I thought about it, the more I realized, well, that's true. That's how humans interact with one another. There's a band of your, your, your school-age kids. There's a band of the, you go into the army and you have a certain friends. There's a band of the guys you hang out with in college. There's your family, there's your workplace. Everybody is sort of all part of a band. And that dynamic that goes on in a band, who's in charge, who's back, background, who's keeping the beat, who's steady, who's reliable, who plays the lead, is very much how people sort of interact with one another. So I thought, I, I bet there's something there that I can do, and, and the story was born. So Frankie Presto, tell me the, the, who is he and where okay, did he come from? Okay, so I'll give you the, the, the 40 second version of this. So Frankie Presto is the greatest guitar player to ever walk the earth. Uh, the book begins at his funeral uh, when music, the actual spirit of music itself, who is the narrator of this book, comes to collect his talent out of Frankie Presto's body. The way that the, the concept works in the book, when you come out of the womb, before you open your eyes, the first thing you grab when you go like this are from a whole wall of colors, and those colors are talents. And whatever you grab, those are your talents. So that's why somebody is good at writing or good at math or good at whatever. And Frankie Presto grabbed more of music than anybody to ever walk the earth. So music has always had its eye on him, you know, throughout the course of his life. And when he comes to collect his talent at his funeral, he decides he's going to stick around and listen to everybody talk about how great his, his precious child was. And so we learn this guy's life from when he was born in Spain in 1936, which of course is where the guitar was invented in Spain. And so he comes from that background. He ends up becoming a pop star in America. He's billed as the next Elvis Presley. Uh, and uh, he goes through all the stuff that happens when you become really popular, but you're really good at playing, but they want to turn you into a pop star. He plays at Woodstock, he meets everybody, and, and then eventually he kind of falls off the map and disappears. And throughout the course of the book, these people who talk at his funeral are not only fictional characters, but some of them are real. Tony Bennett, Wynton Marsalis, Lyle Lovett, all people you Ingrid love. Michelson, yeah. and all friends of mine who agreed to be in the book. And so I write as them, and they talk about when they played with Frankie Presto, when they first found Frankie Presto, when they picked him up when he was down, Frankie Presto, oh, and cool. they all have stories to tell. So it's very much like a Forrest Gump kind of experience. You know, you're half not sure if it's real or not, which is kind of the fun of it. Yeah, you do a lot with the supernatural and the, out, the other world. Uh, and there seems to be, in, in almost every book, there's an element of that in it. And it seems to be, as much as music, something that fascinates you as well. Yeah. Well, I find that if you use magic or heaven or whatever to tell very grounded stories, uh, somehow it gives it, you know, I don't know, another focus. It's like uh, fairy tales. You know, fairy tales in the end, or, or fables, really they're just there to tell you, you know, one little lesson like beauty's only skin deep, or, or you know, friendship matters, or you know, love is, conquers everything. But if you just wrote love conquers everything, it's a cliche. If you create, you know, uh, 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 Cinderella, then it's this magical story about, you know, yeah. a, 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 a pumpkin and, a, and belief in the supernatural. So in this case, Frankie gets, because of all he suffers when he's younger, he gets a guitar given to him by his blind guitar teacher, and he gets six strings that are magical. And over the course of his life, 
he can affect six lives in a certain way. And every time he does, if he saves a life or changes a life, the string turns blue. And that's where the magic strings of Frankie Presto comes from. And the same way that we all affect one another in the bands that we join in life, he as a musician affects, literally changes people's lives with his music. And you follow as a one string, two string, three string, until he's down to his last string. And you're sort of wondering, well, who's the last person going to be? So that's the kind of supernatural yeah. element that oh, you're talking great. about. It's great. And it's yeah. full of hope, as yeah. like, you know, Mitch album novels often are. But let's talk about your own bands, because we just had we just had Dave Barry just walked on up. He's here at BEA too, and you guys are in the Rock Bottom Remainders together, and you were talking gigs. But tell me about other bands you've been in in your life. And well, boy, I mean, my first band was called the Crystal Reflection. Uh, I was probably 11 years old. There were three of us. We had to buy the um, we had to buy the organ players uh, organ the day of our first gig, which was somebody's bas mitzvah party in the basement of her house. We got paid six dollars. <laughs> And we played. Any recordings from the band? Uh, I'm sure there aren't. Thank <laughs> God. And uh, we played like Wild Horses by the Rolling Stones, and Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Uh, you know, Joy of the World by Three Dog Night. Uh, later, I, I I became part of an oldies band, and we toured around. We did okay uh, over the Eastern like Seaboard. Like 50s oldies. 50s rock yeah. and roll. When Shanana was big, oh, we sure. were sort of like a local version of that. We greased our hair back, and I, I learned every song that there was from the early uh, late 50s and early 60s. Later, I formed my own band when I was trying to make it as a musician and a living, and I had like kind of a Billy Joel swagger, and I wore a vest, and I think my band was called Streetwise at one point. I mean, there's so many band names. It's like that joke in Spinal Tap, you know, we used to be called the Originals, but there was a, another band in town yeah. called the Originals, so yeah. we became the new Originals, you know. So, uh, and then there's the Rock Bottom Remainders, of course, which is a band of writers with Stephen King and Dave Barry and Amy Tan and, and, and Ridley Pierce and Scott Thoreau, many others. So um, it's been a long, long lineup. And uh, when I was trying to make it as a musician, I failed miserably. But when I became a writer, it was funny, I wasn't a threat anymore, I guess, or I wasn't competition, and I ended up having a lot of success, relatively, in the writing, in the music world. So Warren Zevon became a friend of mine. I wrote a song for him, he recorded it. Um, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, hired me and, and, and my wife, who's a singer, to do a song for one of his movies, and it got in the movie. Uh, there was, I had a movie, I had a song in a Willie Nelson movie. All these things that never would have happened, probably, if I stayed a musician. Uh, and even getting all these musicians to participate in the book, probably if I was a musician, they might not have done yeah. it. But because I'm a writer, it's like, yeah, that's cool. Well, you know, I find I'll be there's in like a novel. mutual fascination between musicians who are writers and storytellers in their own right, obviously, and writers. Yeah. There's like, there's a kinship there. Obviously, they're cousins, yeah. but it's a very similar. But one wants to be affiliated with the other, and the yeah, other it's kind of like play. athletes and rappers, yeah. you know. <laughs> exactly. uh, but I, I, I think they're a lot closer than that. Um, as rap and, and, and sports are too. There's a lot of free forming, you know, particularly basketball and improvising and things like that. Um, I think in, in writing and music, I always say that one of the reasons I, if I have any talent at music at all, I, at writing, it's because I hear things musically, I hear phrases musically. And when I write, I always do this. I always, I mean, probably even talking to you, I'm doing it then subconsciously. But you, I always rock back and forth as I write. And if I stop, and I'm sitting there like that, it usually means I hit like a clunker sentence or something, my, my writing's know not it. flowing. And you know, one of the things I've always been proud of is people have said about my, my books, you know, boy, they read quickly, you know, like I, I find myself just turning the pages. I think a lot of that is the rhythm and the cadence of your right. words. So the two are very connected, much more than people realize. And I know a lot of writers who are very good musicians oh yeah and a lot of musicians who just the things they scribble their emails and their notes are, are really it's a god this is so colorful you should be a you should write johnny everson here earlier i just saw him walk by behind you he mm -hmm. talked about he likes his where's the swing he said he's all comp facing man that's yeah. like you know yeah. i want my that, that's what he drives him when he's writing exactly it's like the same kind of thinking yep so you do it all though you're, you're writing the books you're we, people see you on espn you write a column for the detroit free press you're on the radio uh, you've never really settled on one. You're always doing all of them. Well, you know that Juggling. old, you know, can't hit a mo moving target. <laughs> I mean, it's a tough world out there for creative people. And, um, you know, I never wanted to get stuck in anything that someone had control over me and said, well, we're going we're gonna to shut down your radio world and you're going to, that's the end of you. you right. know, or we're going to stop publishing your books and that's the end of you. And I, I saw that happen in my life. You know, my father was laid off 
right at the kind of you know biggest part of his career when he was in his 50s and and I, I always vowed that I wasn't going to let anybody do that to me so I probably have overreacted. You're doing a good job. But, uh, yeah, you know, there's a lot cooking yeah, I got a always lot cooking. in the world of Mitch Album. And uh, the, the, the book, we saw it today on the floor. There's a ton of excitement for it. Uh, congratulations on another great title. Thank you, I'm Rich. glad you found your way back to music in the books, too. This will be fun for people. Yeah, this tour should be fun. We're talking about doing a, um, a soundtrack album with a lot of the artists who are on it. And from what I understand, uh, iTunes is uh, they're working out a, an arrangement where there's going to be an e-book that allows you to listen to all these songs. There's hundreds of songs referenced yeah. in there. It allows you to listen to these songs without leaving the book. You know, one of the problems with they try to do e-books is that you want, it interrupts the flow yeah. of reading. But if I say, well, there was this little passage that Frankie heard of a classical tune written by Francisco Torrega, and that passage plays right as he hears it yeah. and you hear it at Over the same the time. Beautiful. Yeah, so that's what our goal you is. You can truly make it interactive like that. It'll change it all. Well, Keep that's, what we're, that. that's what we're working on. All right. Well, it's great to have you. Thanks a lot. Congratulations on everything. Good to see Thanks, you. Thanks, Mitch.